Welcome to environmental sustainability. So environmental sustainability is the ability of the environment to survive economic activities. That's what sustainability is. Development, on the other hand, sustainable development is meeting the needs of the present generations without compromising the needs of future generations. All right, let's talk about renewable and non-renewable resources. Renewable means that the resources could be replaced or regenerated. And we could see there in the picture, uh, the sun, the water, plants, uh, these are renewable resources. The sun uh, will rise again uh, even after it is set. So that makes a sun a renewable and even water, it will rain again and we'll have water again. So then it's renewable. Uh, and even plants, we can plant them again and get new plants. Non-renewable, on the other hand, once you've used it, it's gone. Resources are extracted but cannot be replaced or regenerated. And here we've got uh, examples of non-renewable resources like minerals, coal, soil. So once you've used these resources, you, um, they are used up. Okay, here are some more terms. Erosion. Um, is the removal of soil from the environment. Deforestation, on the other hand, is the removal of indigenous forest or trees. Uh, so when these are removed, then that's called deforestation. Pollution, sometimes called emissions. Uh, it's when there's dumping of harmful waste material into the environment. We can see the water pollution there. Uh, when harmful substances are dumped into the water, there's air pollution on the other one. We've got, uh, we could see some more water pollution here, plastic being dumped by the ocean. All these are forms of pollution or emissions. All right, so now we want to explain greenhouse gases. Uh, and here we can think of a greenhouse. What does a greenhouse do? And most farmers are now using greenhouses. So a greenhouse keeps the heat for plants that need it. So it traps the heat of the sun so that plants will always have heat even through the night, even when it's uh, cold because of a greenhouse. And we can see it in the picture there. That greenhouse will absorb the heat. Um, and that's exactly what these gases do to the atmosphere. So the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, uh, they are trapped in the earth atmosphere. And what do they do? Because they get trapped in the atmosphere. They contribute to global warming. So we could see it in the picture there. Greenhouse gases getting trapped in the atmosphere, causing global warming. And the definition of global warming is the gradual increase in the atmosphere temperature. So the temperature increases gradually. That's what global warming is. So climate change, uh, when the climate changes, change in normal weather patterns heat, wind, and storms, and earthquakes. When you start to see these things, this is an indication that the climate is changing. The normal weather patterns change. So uh, we have too much heat, too much wind, too many storms, and sometimes earthquakes, climate change. And we can see those events in the images there. All right, indigenous knowledge. What's indigenous knowledge? It's the traditional and cultural knowledge of specific local community, right? Indigenous means it is uh, traditional knowledge that that community has. And we can see in the picture there, uh, some of the uh, Khoi people, uh, we can still find them in certain regions, especially in the Northern Cape. They would have indigenous knowledge about uh, their systems and, you know, um, the history. Okay, here's a difference between conservation and preservation. Conservation, you keep the environment intact, right? Keep the environment intact for present and future generations. Uh, the example of conservation would be botanical gardens, game parks. Uh, whereas with preservations, you keep non-renewable resources intact, such as ecological systems and heritage sites. So the one, the conservation, focuses on nature, and the other one focuses on, uh, you know, ecological systems and heritage sites, so things that are not necessarily from nature. 
So conservation here, we see a picture of a botanical garden uh, with plants. And, you know, when you are keeping these botanical gardens or game parks or um, the safari where you find wild animals, keeping them uh, intact, you know, that's called conservation. But when you keep heritage sites like um, uh, Robben Island intact, because uh, Robben Island is an heritage a site with a, each, a rich history uh, and also ecological systems. Ecological system means you keep the school, the family, all the, the things that make us who we are as humans. So you keep school, family, peer groups, neighbors, the culture, all of these things you must be kept intact throughout the generations. Now that is preservation. And again, I repeat, conservation is more uh, on the, is focused on the environment, keeping the environment intact. Whereas preservation is more on keeping the non-renewable resources intact. Okay, so what could the government do? What are some of the government interventions to control pollution or emissions? The government can introduce an environmental tax. This environmental tax is also called a green tax, sometimes called a carbon tax. So this is a tax charged on goods that harm the environment, goods with an external cost, a negative externality. An environmental subsidy is just the opposite. So you, this is a grant that can be given to green businesses. Remember the word green refers to being environmental friendly. So green businesses can receive a subsidy or a grant. Third one is a marketable permit. So a business can get a license to pollute only a certain amount. Remember businesses have to pollute a certain amount. Otherwise we wouldn't have goods and services. But they can get a marketable permit, a permit which allows them to produce only a certain amount. The government can also enforce command and control. By enforcing command and control, the government would be giving direct regulations and laws uh, regarding pollution. There are also some international measures. There's the Kyoto Protocol, which is an agreement by developed countries to reduce emissions or pay. In the Kyoto Protocol uh, Convention, this was agreed that uh, developed countries would reduce emissions or they would pay for polluting in developing countries. The Stockholm Protocol is another convention uh, where the, an agreement was reached to reduce chemical waste. Basel Convention is also an international agreement to manage the export and imports of nuclear waste, sometimes called hazardous material. So that was agreed upon in the Basel Convention. The last one is the CITES Convention of International Trade and Endangered Species, uh, also a UN convention to protect uh, loss of biodiversity. Remember, biodiversity means different uh, species on Earth, animals and plants, by protecting endangered species. We know uh, the endangered species such as the rhino uh, that may become extinct if it's not protected or even the elephant. So this convention, the sites was for protecting those endangered species. They are endangered because, well, they could they are in danger of becoming extinct. All right, those are some of the international measures that were taken to protect the environment. Thank you.